Yes, now, bless now. Don't forget the rest now, people. Yo, we're going to go on a little mission. I'm going to cover some lost ground here, yeah? I'm going to look into a bit of Radiohead lore and history via Wikipedia. Obviously, we don't take uh, Wikipedia as completely factual because it's not, but a little bit of room for discussion. I know I've got a lot of Radiohead fans on here, so we're going to have a little research session. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do numerous videos covering history, um, up until certain records and we'll go record by record have a look at the history that aligns with that record and then have a look at some information regarding that record so of course we're gonna have Pablo Honey first but let's have a look what came before that and where we went from there so um, Radiohead obviously are an English rock band formed in Abingdon Oxfordshire so I've never heard of Abingdon before that's um, Abingdon on Thames Commonly known as Windsor is a historic market town and civil parish in the ceremonial county of Oxfordshire. Oxfordshire, oh, oh. Um, I don't know, no bands that have come from there. Oxfordshire as a general, really. I don't know too many acts that have come from that area. Um, I think they sort of don't really comment on it. Uh, they were formed in 85, so they're an 80s band, which I, I don't associate Radiohead with the 80s. I associate them with the 90s, so... Let's see uh, what's going on. The band consists of Tom York. Uh, shout out to my man, Tom. Mainly plays guitars and keyboards, and he's noted for his falsetto. Yeah, yeah, doesn't tend to leave it much, does he? Brothers, Johnny Gre I've heard of Johnny Greenwood before. Johnny Greenwood, um, he writes film scores, and he's been named one of the greatest guitarists by publications including Rolling Stone. Stone. Uh, one of the greatest guitarists is up for debate. It's up for debate, but each to their own. Each to their own. It depends on what you perceive as great, obviously. Uh, the guy doesn't shred, but he knows his way around a few chords and timings and definitely his big broken chords and twinkly bits. Um, and Colin Greenwood, who's on the bass. Uh Cool. Ed O'Brien, who's on guitar and backing vocals. Don't really give credit to the backing vocals much. He releases solo music under the name EOB. Philip Selway on drums and percussion, who was actually inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Well, I, I guess they all did, because it, it must mean Radiohead has. I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. They have worked with the producer Ni Nigel Godrich. And uh, the cover artist Stanley Donwood since 94. Wow. So let me put some respect definitely on Stanley. Uh, A.K.A. Dan Rickwood. Because that's some commitment. And Stanley has created some very cool artwork for Radiohead. Which aligns with what I would consider their artistic, you know, aura and needs. I don't know what I'm trying to say. You know what I'm trying to say. Uh, so Radiohead's experimental approach is credited with advancing the sound of alternate rock. Yep. Radiohead signed to EMI in 91, so six years, uh, and released their debut album Pablo Honey in 93. So the band had been a band for eight years prior to releasing Pablo Honey. Their debut single, Creep, became a worldwide hit. Wow, what happened for him to get signed to EMI and get that push? That's what I want to know. Radiohead's popularity and critical standing rose with the release of The Benz in 95, so only two years after. Radiohead's third album, OK Computer, in 97, brought them international fame, noted by its complex production of <sighs> themes of modern alienation. It is acclaimed as a landmark record. And one of the best albums in popular music. Wow, how bold is that? So I'm going to, you know what, we'll I don't want to read too much into it because um, we're going to get into history, which covers records I've not checked out yet. So uh, let's have a look at the formation in the first years. And you know what? We'll leave Pablo Hoodie for another video. This is going to be based upon the early foundation uh, before they attained their early success so uh 85 to 92 uh they met whilst attending a bingdon school i'm probably butchering the title of that it's an independent school for boys in oxfordshire uh, the guitarist and singer tom york and the bassist colin greenwood were in the same year the guitarist ed o'brien and the drummer philip Solway in the year above wow so the band completely came from the school 
and call his brother the multi-instrumentalist Johnny Greenwood two years below. So Johnny's the youngest of the bunch. In 85, they formed on a Friday. The name referring to their usual rehearsal day. Um, all right. Johnny was last to join. First on album. Ba, 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 ba. Ba, 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 ba. According to Colin, the band members picked their instruments because they wanted to play together rather than through any particular interest. It was more of a collective angle, and if you could contribute by having someone else play your instrument, then that was really cool. That's something not a lot of bands abide by, and I'm speaking personally on that. I don't want anybody else to play my guitar. I don't want anybody else to do the writing. I want the writing. I want the credits. I want the creative freedom. But really, there is no creative freedom. It's very limited. So I, I, I rate that. At one point on a Friday, featured a saxophone section. The band dislikes the band disliked the school's strict atmosphere. The headmaster once charged them for using a rehearsal room on a Sunday and found solace in the music department. Um, I don't know what why they're telling me about the headmaster charging them for using a rehearsal room. So no, who cares? They credited their music teach for introducing them to jazz, film scores, post-war avant-garde music, and 20th century classical music. Oxfordshire and the Thames Valley had an active independent music scene in the late 80s, but it centred on shoegazing bands such as Ride and Slow Dive. Interesting. I know nothing about shoegaze. So it's a subgenre of indie and alt rock characterised by its, I don't know how to pronounce that, a mixture of obscured vocals, Guitar distortion and effects feedback and overwhel overwhelming volume. That doesn't sound good to me. Uh, I get the vibe, but I don't want to go... You know what I mean? When people say the loudest band, that was the loudest band I've ever heard. It's not good. My ears ring regardless. I don't want to go potentially deaf. I want to enjoy the audio experience. Um, so yeah, cool. Shoegaze. Of course I'm aware of shoegaze, but I've never listened to shoegaze properly. So Ride, um, are they from and Slow Dive? Are they from Oxfordshire? Reading Berkshire, Slow Dive. Uh, on the strength of an early demo, on a Friday, were offered a record deal by Island Records. Now, Island Records is a big deal, but they decided they were not ready and wanted to go to university first. Okay, people, let me ask you something. Were Radiohead hooked up already? It's about who you know, right? Were they privileged, these lot? Who was the privileged one? Because they put a demo out. It's not about on the strength of an early demo. It's about getting your demo to Island Records and having somebody, a representative in that record label, saying, yeah, yeah, we are signing on a Friday. That's different to just having good music. On a Friday, played their first gig in 87 um, at Oxford's Jericho Tavern. Uh, is that still about? Does it stay? Uh, it is, yeah, yeah. It's an important part of the music scene which produced Ride Radiohead and Supergrass. We are young, we are free. Uh, but uh, on a Friday, continued to rehearse on weekends and holidays, but did not perform for four years. Why the hell not? Let's make some music. At the University of Exeter, York played with the band Headless Chickens, performing songs including future Radiohead material. He also met Stanley Donwood, who became Radiohead's cover artist. In 91, on a Friday, regrouped in Oxford, sharing a house on the corner of Magdalen Road and Ridgefield Road. They recorded another demo, which attracted the attention of Chris Hufford, Slow Dive's producer and the co-owner of Oxford's Courtyard Studios. He and his business partner, Bryce Edge, attended a concert at the Jericho Tavern, impressed they became On A Friday's manager. On A Friday, what do you think of the band name On A Friday? What do you think? In late 91, Colin happened to meet the EMI A and R representative. Okay, so who's this Colin again? The art artist? Who's Colin? Oh, fuck. Colin Greenwood is the bassist. And he just happened to meet the EMI A and R representative, Keith Wozencroft, at a record shop. And handed him a copy of their latest demo tape. Just handed him a copy. Had one going. Here it is. Wozencroft was impressed and attended a performance. Okay. That November, on a Friday, performed at the Jericho Tavern to an audience that included several A&R representatives. It was only their eighth gig, but they had attracted interest from several record companies. On 21 December... Now, this just doesn't happen nowadays. This does not happen. These bands need to be grinding for a minute. 
have an emphasis, create a pull. Times were different in the 80s, obviously. Um, the label blew you up back then. Now you blow up and then the label comes knocking on your door. Um, unless you're, you know, a, uh, what would you call it? A um, industry plant. On 21st of December, on a, on a Friday, it, it blags my head reading it. So I guess that's why they changed the name. They should have. On a Friday, signed a six album recording contract with EMI. Six albums. At EMI's request, the band changed their name. Go on to Radiohead. Was taken from the song Radiohead on the Talking Heads album, True Stories. York said the name sums up all of these things about receiving stuff. It's about the way you take information in and the way you respond to the environment you're put in. Now, me personally, they were young, so I, I'm okay with it. I don't like bands taking their names from other artists' creations. Not directly, at least. I think it's a bit of a cop-out. Local circuit around here, there's so many bands like hardcore and metal music that will name themselves off of a song a band did in the 80s or so forth. And I just think it lacks originality. A band like Radiohead, Radiohead is a great song title. I've never listened to the Talking Heads properly, but I feel, you know, the it, it, it hurts me to know that this pristine, creative... Uh, powerhouse radiohead has just pinched their name off of a talking head song don't think much to that anyway we're going to continue on going and we'll look at the history of uh pablo honey and we'll delve into pablo honey uh their debut record see some factoids i like that record um i know it's debatable among radiohead fans i liked it i liked it and uh i'm gonna sign out then people till next time